Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trufinet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome to Fallout 4. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to do a playthrough in uh, Fallout 4 because it's, well, there's been a lot of other games on my list. But I think finally the time has come for me to uh, dabble in some Fallout 4. So, what we're gonna try and do with this series is something special because I have been thinking. And everybody started to compare, well, at the beginning when Fallout first became popular again with Fallout 3, that Fallout was kind of the Elder Scrolls with guns. Well, I kind of had the thought to do something completely opposite to that and turn Fallout into a bit more of the Elder Scrolls. We're gonna do Fallout 4, but without using a single gun. So we're gonna go through the entirety of the game, try to do uh, most of the quests as we go along and never use a single gun. So just to make the rules clear, that means no projectile weapons whatsoever, no guns, no pistols, no rifles, no uh, missile launchers, no fat man, nothing that shoots a projectile. What will be, um, uh, what will be allowed are melee weapons, unarmed weapons and explosives. So that should give me a bit of chance in this playthrough but uh well it's gonna have to be a bit of a, a challenge therefore so uh let's start up a new game so first the difficulty we're gonna put it on very hard just again to make this a bit of a challenge um the reason why i'm not going for survival is because survival adds a few things that might be very hard for a well almost impossible to do for a melee only character well not melee only but no guns run so we're gonna go for very hard which still means that the enemies are actually tougher than it on survival uh but we have a bit more options on the healing front so so very hard it is and with that selected let's go into new game and here we go so just to make this clear, since this is my first playthrough on the channel, I'm gonna show you most of the important story beats. I'm gonna try and cut out a few of the less interesting bits. Uh, but just to give you an idea about how this is gonna play out. War. War never changes. So there we go, the very familiar sentence, war never changes, almost every Fallout game starts with that statement and usually ends with it as well. But uh, I've played a bit of Fallout 4, well not a bit, I actually played a lot of Fallout 4, but I don't know everything. Uh, so I'm still going to be surprised by events, I'm still going to be surprised by side quests I haven't done yet, I'm still going to be surprised about uh, new areas I haven't seen before. Uh, but I do know my way around this game, uh, but yeah, I'm always free, open for uh, commentary, for uh, a discussion in the comment section, so please do give me some tips if you think I can uh, improve my playthrough, please do. And uh, yeah, if you're the first, uh, if you're on this channel for the first time, because of this series for example, uh, please let me know how you found the channel, because that's very interesting to me to know uh, how people get to know this channel. But uh, yeah, this starting cinematic is just to introduce you to the world of Fallout 4. So, if you don't know, Fallout is set in an alternate universe where the, the progress of evolution of technology uh, took a different turn than what it did with us. So nuclear reactors were a bit more uh, focused. But eventually, lots of consumption, a, a huge amount of consumption on the planet caused resources to run thin and of course, a, well, another world war broke out. So long story short, a war is coming and we're at the very start of that war. In contrast with the other Fallout games which, are, which started actually after, uh, well, a long period after this war. Because, uh, yeah. It's that war. War never changes. War never changes. But uh, Fallout 4 is the first game that actually gives you a glimpse what it was before the uh, nuclear apocalypse. So as a character, I came up with uh, well somebody familiar. So if you followed the well the YouTube channel uh, so far, you might have noticed the gro our group therapy series in Dark Souls 3, where we created the enigmatic Bayou Bob. 
and that's where this guy comes from. So I've kind of based his uh, appearance as much as I could on Bayou Bob. You will see a comparison right now. And uh, well, yeah, after his adventures in Dark Souls 3 and Lotric and the surrounding areas, Bob came to rest and uh, started living a more quiet life in the neighborhood of Boston. But uh, yeah, things are gonna turn wrong really quickly. And since Bob doesn't really know how to use a gun, he, uh, he has to resort to other means. So he also got himself a lovely wife, but in regards to body structure, we're gonna go in between muscular and large because he got a bit of uh, he got a bit of uh, of training in Dark Souls 3 using those heavy weaponry, swinging that around so he didn't really lose that physique. But of course, he got to uh, drinking a bit of uh, Estus over there, and then of course took that over into an alcohol kind of an alcohol addiction in uh, Boston over here. So that is Bayou Bob uh, reimagined. But yeah, all things considered, I did Bob did we very well for himself. So he has a lovely wife, a lovely uh, house, as you'll see in a second. But uh, I'm gonna stop uh, yapping about and let's get going. So luckily for everybody, um, Bayou Bob uh, Fallout 4 is of course uh, a game that's mostly played in first person. We're gonna swap out, uh, swap back and forth into third person a lot as well, because of course we're playing a melee character mostly. So that's gonna come in handy. But of course, for now, we're gonna go into first person. So a lovely contemporary home in uh, ah, Boston. Good morning, sir. Your coffee. So yeah. Codsworth made us a lovely uh, cup of coffee. So Codsworth, of course, being uh, our house bot. You know, I was nervous at first, but Codsworth's really good with Sean. Yeah, it's a bit weird for a robot that has a bus saw as a hand. I think, although I think, yeah, he still has. Enjoy your coffee, sir. I was wondering whether Codsworth actually had a bus saw. I never really tried to pay too much attention to that, but of course Coldsworth, our handyman bot. So not only did Bayou Bob have a lovely wife, a new lovely home, but of course he also made a baby. Look at that. Hello, Sean. Coochie, 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 coo. Can you get that? It's probably that salesman. He comes for you every day. Let's open up the door, because there's a sal salesman on the door. Yeah, because you can actually keep this going and there's a lot of dialogue for when you just keep the salesman at the door. But let's just open up the door. Good morning. vault calling. Ooh, vault -Tec. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it? Just look at that sky out there. <clears throat> you can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. They never actually explain why, but yeah, the Voltec rep always talks about we've been trying for days, but we don't even know why. So, yeah, urgency. What's so important. Why nothing less than your entire future. The big kaboom is... It's inevitable, I'm afraid. You have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault... 111. Vault 111. So, um, yeah, Bob kind of went into the army after he went to Lotric. Yeah, don't, 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 don't linger too much on the details. So, um, um, is there enough space for my entire family? But there's room for my entire family, right? Of course, of course. Miner's your robot, naturally. In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Won't take but a moment. So that's the interesting part. So as you can hear about how the Voltec rep is talking about that, he doesn't actually believe that it's actually coming. Um, but yeah. Sure, let's do it. So name is very interesting because there are a whole set of uh, predefined names that uh, a few characters, mainly Coldsworth, actually are able to pronounce. And Bob is luckily one of them. So uh, let's go with Bob. And then of course our stats, very important, but uh, this is kind of the build I'm going with. So seven strength strength, of course, being incredibly important for our uh, melee character, um, which is, yeah, it's a good middle route, but I think agility is gonna be more important and I'll explain to you why in a second. Perception, so perception is pretty useless most of the, 
most of the time, but there's a very interesting uh, perk in Explosives Expert that is unlocked at um, Perception 5, I think, so 4 should be enough for now. Endurance, just one point in there, just to, just to get, have a little bit of more of uh, health. Charisma and Intelligence, both at 1, at the least amount I can actually put it at agility eight agility um so as the game states it agility is a measure of your overall finesse and reflexes it affects the number of action points in vats and your ability to sneak so sneaking is going to be very important as a melee character and there's one incredibly useful perk that i want to try out because i actually never tried that out but it's very good for melee builds but we'll see that when we get there and then look at five i want to have luck at five for some uh, other perks and uh, well we'll see that in practice don't really need to explain everything right now uh, and leave something um, for when we're going so uh, yeah that's the build here we go wonderful that's everything uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault congratulations on being prepared for the future bye vault tech wrap thanks again hey it's peace of mind that's worth a little paperwork right for you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. I have my moments. So funnily enough, the there's a different backstory for when you go Mr. with a female character. Sean has See, Mr. Bob. But he absolutely refuses to calm down. I think he needs some of that paternal affection you seem to be so good at. <laughs> you heard Codsworth. Go on. So yeah, so Sean, our son, is crying. And there we go, Mr. Bob Codsworth actually said our name, which is really, really Mr. good. Bob, there we go, he does I it may, again. Sean requires your personal attention. The boy needs his father after all. Yes, yes, indeed. So, that's actually interesting. I never really noticed that. That, that dispenser on your left arm, that's soap then, because he's doing the dishes with it. Or maybe a brush of some sort. That is really interesting. Never noticed that animation. But let's go and tickle Sean. Hello, boy. Tickle, tickle, How are tickle. The two most important men in my life doing? Spin the mobile a bit. He loves that. Oh, hello, Nora. Thank you for that tip. Let's just spin the mobile. So, uh, a bit of music you might recognize from Fallout 3 as well. Much better now, huh? Listen, after breakfast. I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. So, uh, Bayou Bob isn't really a, uh, a well-mattered... Man, mattered? Mannered man. So let's go for the sarcastic option. Will it be like that night in the park a year ago? Sir? Mom? You should come and see this! He kind of laughed at it in the Godworth? open. What's wrong? And then, of course, things are going uh, to turn around a bit. So let's open the door and let's go check out what Coldsworth is talking about. We do have coming in. That's um, confirmed reports. I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. So of course we need to get this story going, which means that the war has oh broken God. out. We need to get to the vault. And now. a lot of big cities in America have already been nuked. So uh, we're at Boston, just to be clear again. And look at this place. So I really like what they did with this place, because Sanctuary Hills, it's its like a very iconic area right now, because of course the game has been out for a while. But I love how they did this, like the bright colors in the trees, the bright blue sky, the cars are all shiny and red. And uh, of course in stark comparison at what is, uh, it is going to be in the future in, uh, in a few minutes. So uh, yeah, there's actually a way you can get yourself killed here. I'm not going to show it to you, but you can actually, if you go past the tank over there and even in the general direction, the nuke is going to go off and you're going to die anyway. But let's just uh, start sprinting. Oh, look at that. Look at how fast I can run and how slow the action points are going away. So remember the vault tech rep that was at our door a few minutes ago and didn't believe all this crap? He's uh, still here, but he's not allowed in. So let's go in. If you're in the pr we need to get in. We're on the list. Infant, adult male, adult female. Okay, go ahead. Thank so I, you. I love that description. I mean, adult male, adult female, and an infant. That's pretty much a description of most families, I suppose. But yeah, here we go. I can actually get myself underneath the 
the aircraft here, but the Verti Bird, the Verti Bird. I know the names, I know the names, but yeah. Quickly in the center, but I love I love also this because this is of course the most important, well, the starting point of this game. But if you turn around when this happens, almost there. We're look, there's okay. there's somebody over there. I love you, both of you. We love you too. And the nuke goes off, but those two guys over there don't react one bit. They're stuck in their animations. But yeah, there's a nuke, by the way. So the nuke just went off. Oh, just in time. It's a hell of an opening scene, though. So yeah, there's now a few people with us. We made it. We're okay. But yeah, forget about your luggage. So we have Mr. Russell, we have Mr. Abel, Mr. Whitfield, and then Mrs. Whitfield and Mrs. Abel. So uh, Mr. Russell is alone and the other are couples. So let's get up and I'm gonna skip through most of these because uh, it's not really that interesting. And there we go, we get uh, a Voltec jumpsuit. Thank you very much. And I think I can actually jump into the suit already or does that happen automatically? I think that happens automatically in a second. So of course, if you uh, played a Fallout game before, you know Voltec isn't really the most uh, friendly of companies. But uh, every Vault was actually created to perform some kind of experiment, with a wide variety of experiments being performed. And uh, this one is actually no different. So we need to go into processing, quote-unquote processing, which just means we need to get into one of these things. So, uh... Just step in here and put your Vault suit on. I'm just gonna go into third person camera and then if we just interact with the decontamination pod we go in i can actually see yeah there we go so we put it on but yeah no third person camera in there and we're going inside decontaminate and depressurize you before we head deeper in the ball just relax so we're just gonna be decontaminated uh, says the doctor before we go deeper into the vault and our wife and child is over there and the other pod occupant vitals Normal. Procedure complete. In five. And then the pot freezes over. So everything goes white until suddenly. So cryogenic stasis also already uh, indicates that we're not being decontaminated, but we were put to sleep in uh, cryostasis. So yeah, we were frozen, frozen and kept alive, but it appears like we're still alive now. But there's a few uh, new characters entering the vault, opening uh, the pot of our wife and child. They seem to be reaching for the child. And there we go. I think... No, did they move that out of it? At least we still have the backup. Before, I could swear you could actually thump the window. But yeah, they just killed their wives and shot her in the face. <coughs> and suddenly... We're awoken again. Um, and there we go. We're probably not feeling so well. So yeah, they just killed our wife out of time. So yeah, we were frozen solid, which means that uh, this vault was actually created to test cryogenic stasis. So all vaults are uh, experiments, and this one was actually pretty benign, all things considered, if you compare it to all the vaults. So the people that were brought here were just put into cryogenic stasis, which means we actually survived everything. But yeah, there's also been a lot of time that went past. If you can check out, you can check out the computer over here. So if you head into the computer, you can actually check the status of everyone in the vault. So it's all the people we've uh, seen before. So Mr. and Mrs. Callahan, Mr. and Mrs. Abel and Mr. Russell, Bob, which is us, of course, an empty pod, and then Nora and Sean. Uh, you can... Uh, 
check the statuses of everybody and everybody is actually you can confirm that everybody is just deceased asphyxiation due to life support failure so the rest of the computer also indicates this that the system was actually shut down prematurely um, and the pulse only open up when there's only one subject still alive and that's why we are the sole survivor. The pod of Nora and Sean just states that the status is unknown, pod door manual override engaged. So somebody opened up the pod, we already knew that. You can actually open up, the, the only pod you can actually open up is Nora's pod, so your wife's pod. And you can actually take the wedding ring, but we're not gonna do that just now. You, you have a bit of conversation there, but that's... Pretty not, not, not that important. There's not just that room with uh, cryogenic pods, there's a, a few more as well with everybody just dead as well. So Mr. De Pietro and then the Coffrin family and the Whitfield family. So all deceased asphyxiation due to uh, system failure. So we're gonna skip through this rather quickly, there's not much going on aside from of course the place being uh, infested with rat roaches at the moment. Uh, so we're gonna have our first bit of combat in a second, but I'm just gonna loot around a bit. Our first stim pack on the desk, and then a security terminal. So this indicates that Vault 111 is designed to test the long-term effects of suspended animation on unaware human subjects. So the fact that we were not told what was going to happen was part of the experiment. So this also indicates that uh, they can only open up the pods when most of the population has deceased. So uh, the center uh, text uh, actually talks about that. Life-saving intervention is only permitted if greater than 80% of the resident population has perished while in cryogenic suspension and must not interrupt suspension. Independent research is encouraged and left to overseer discretion. It also just describes what the staff can do and that the, the vault is actually locked in completely uh, to uh, ensure the, the, well, the most interesting uh, data being gathered. And staff is only allowed to leave when they get the all clear from outside, but that, uh, that actually never happened. But in the absence of an all clear message from Vault Tech, the overseer may elect to evacuate staff after a mandatory shelter period of 180 days of containment. Under no circumstance may Vault 111 staff evacuate during this shelter period unless receiving the all clear message from Vault Tech. So uh, if that didn't happen and they didn't get out, that is uh, on them. So, and then in the next story, we have our first enemy. It's actually a rad roach, and we can actually start sneaking, I think. Take the security baton, and then sneak up to the rad roach, and see how much we're gonna do. There we go. Oh, that was actually a one-hit kill. Giant roaches. What the hell? So yeah, Bob, we have giant roaches. You've been fighting dragons and the like, so what is a giant roach to you? It actually one-hit kill kill isn't actually that bad i suspected more because that wasn't a sneak attack and we're on the the damage wise hardest difficulty interesting so recreation terminal doesn't really sh have much in it except for the holotape for rat menace which is actually a video game you can play but we're not gonna be doing that so not much in the sake of loot but let's head into the power generator room and there's a few more rat roaches around here that are being zapped by the generator so Kind of indicating that you should be wary of uh, heading in there. But I know there's at least two more. Do need to be careful with my range here. Ooh! They don't do that much damage, but it's, it's actually pretty significant, all things considered. Because these are the most basic enemies you can find, so yeah. So R1 is power attack, which is going to be important. Ow. Ow. Fuck off. Yeah, there we go. We are taking quite a bit of damage, but for now, of course, it's manageable. Because, yeah, we don't have any armor. I think there's one more roach underneath the corpse or not? No. What happened here? Where is everyone? So I think this is actually the overseer, because this is the overseer uh, office. Um, everything in this first area is actually auto-equipped, so you can actually see their stim pack equips automatically in the security battle on the left. And then if I uh, take the 10mm pistol, which we're of course not going to use, but we need to take it nonetheless, 
Uh, it's also auto-equipped because we don't have a Pip-Boy yet to equip those things. Let's take the eyeglass. I think even those are automatically equipped. And let's check out the Overseer's Terminal. So the Overseer Terminal has kind of the same uh, documents that we saw on the previous terminal with a few more macabre instances. So the previous terminal also indicated that the staff, the well, the security staff was authorized lethal force. So they could kill, actually kill uh, people inside that weren't well, started freaking out because of the experiments. Um, and this one says, unused cryogenic pods are the preferred method for cadaver disposal. So there's a few pods that we can find. There's a, I think there's one that we just saw, uh, the last one we checked, that there's just one person in there that doesn't seem to be related to any other uh, family. I think those are actually members of the staff that were killed because uh, nobody really liked everything. But let's check the overseer's log. So everything was going fine. So the people coming in was, uh, well, working as expected. The people were too confused to even question the pods themselves. But uh, when they were reaching the 180 day mandatory shelter period, there was no all clear signal. And of course they were running out of supplies. But the overseer had the thought that 180 days would not be would not be nearly enough to have the radioactive exposure outside be uh, safe for everyone. So the overseer refused to open the door even after the mandatory, uh, well, shelter period. And of course that led to a mutiny. And of course he, uh, the overseer just put the entire vault on lockdown. But we can of course open up the uh, overseer, the evacuation tunnel from this terminal. So there we go. The evacuation tunnel is now open. Remind all staff to be orderly and follow shutdown protocols before exiting and resealing vault 111. And there goes the door. There we go. So that's uh, our first step. There's a few more supplies around here and the cryo uh, later, which is a freeze gun. But again, it's a gun, so we can't use it. So mostly 10 millimeter ammo. So let's leave the overseer's office. And now we have the tunnel full of rad roaches. I think if I'm slow enough. No, 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 fuck it. Fuck you. I've killed dragons bigger than you. There we go. That was all of them, I think. I do hear another noise and the brackets are still shuffling. So I'm supposing there's still one more. Ah, oh, rad roach meat. That is lovely voice. Okay, it's just tripping from the ceiling. The brackets are still shuffling. So there's definitely something, but I think we're at the exit already, almost. Almost. There we go, the exit and another rad roach. There we go. And I think there's one more over here on the left underneath the corpse. No? I think there was. Is this all that's left? Yeah, because of course, a part of the mutiny clearly almost got out, because those guys are actually wearing a Volt jumps a Volt 111 jumpsuit, so those guys actually got out. Yeah, there he is. There he is. I knew there was one more rat roach. Yeah, he got a hit in. Never mind, he got a hit in. Uh, I think there's a bit more supplies over here. Just a few more bullets, but I think I don't think I need to sneak anymore. So let's take the Pip Boy from this dead uh, scientist, probably part of the mutiny. There goes his arm. Bob has seen a lot of skeletons, killed a lot of skeletons. So that's nothing new. Close it up and turn it on again. Lovely piece of machinery. And uh, let's check everything out. And there's the pit boy, the vault boy himself. So uh, yeah, there's not much to see here. So uh, 18 points of damage with our currently equipped weapon. And I think that is the security baton that does 18 damage right now. So that's equal to the gun, to the 10 millimeter pistol. We're, I'm keep, keeping those so I can sell them later on. So we're not gonna use those of course, but uh, we're going to be able to sell them rather nicely. So 18 damage, 5 energy resistance, uh, 10 radioactive resistance, 140 action points and 90 points of health. Not much to see here otherwise, so let's just activate the vault door which we can now uh, open up because of our pit boy. There we go, sticking that in there. And the lovely door opening animation that has been... Uh, it's kind of has been uh, always a special moment. 
Because of course this means we're gonna head outside. So I can go over here. And it's our first steps outside. So Bayou Bob is ready to go outside in uh, the wasteland again. So there we go, the bright light heading us outside, the music swelling up, and Bayou Bob ready to take on the world with the security baton. I don't think that's gonna cut it, Bob, but he looks ready enough. He looks ready enough, so let's start swinging. Yeah, it's not gonna open it up by itself, so I just wanna, I just wanna, yeah, here we go, let's go upstairs. And there we go, the sun shining in Bob's face. He can't handle all that beautiful tree life. That is, of course, completely wiped away. So this is... Well, this, this thing in particular is Sanctuary Hills. You can see in the distance there, Boston itself. But, yeah, this is what's left of our home. I do love that Fallout 4 is a bit more colorful. Because as you can see, I mean, we have... Bright blue, red, and yellow in the same frame right now, which is actually perfect at the moment. But uh, yeah, things did not go well for this area after a nuclear explosion wiped away the city. Well, not all of the city, as you can see, um, but the people outside of here were, of course, all, well, killed because of the blast. So uh, I'm just going to loop, uh, loot around a bit and we'll head towards Sanctuary Hills in a second. So these boxes right next to the entrance are actually could actually contain a lot of interesting loot, but right now it doesn't seem all that interesting. Bottle cabin, a rad axe, yeah. And the next cabinet over has a, a glorious desk fan, because of course Fallout 4 added a very intense crafting system that uh, kind of causes you to start looting pretty much everything, because all of those things have uh, materials, materials that can be used in crafting amazing weaponry and armor. So uh, yeah, even a simple ashtray might be very handy someday. So let's take the, the cram. Yeah, thank you. Wouldn't leave the vault without my cram now, would I? Prepare for the future, where well, we did. And we're here now. So yeah, so we're now we're doing the reverse route as we did when we went towards the vault. And it looks a lot different, of course. Completely different. But there we go, Sanctuary. Named after Sanctuary Hills. And yeah, it doesn't look so good anymore. Kind of everybody died. The houses, well, all things considered, I feel like the houses actually look pretty good. I mean, they're not completely wiped off the map. They're still here. But of course, there's one more person that is still alive. Well, not really a person. Well, hello, Codsworth. Yes, Codsworth. It's really you. Indeed, it is me. So, uh, yeah. Bob doesn't really know what's going on. We know, of course, because most of us, I'm assuming most of us has, have probably played the game, of course. But uh, you're still here. Codsworth? You're, you're still here. So, other people could still be alive, too. But of course I'm still here. Best not let the wife see you in that state. Hmm? Where is the missus, by the way? Shot in the face. Sir, these things you're saying, these, these terrible things, I, I believe you need a distraction. Checkers, or perhaps charades. Sean does so love that game. <laughs> Is the lad uh, with you? Um, well, they've not only killed my wife, but they also kidnapped Sean. You're suffering from hunger-induced paranoia. Not eating properly for 200 years will do that, I'm afraid. And Coltsworth doesn't believe us. So, uh, 200 years, that was the important thing to take away from that. So it's been 200 years since we went down into the vault. It's only been 20 minutes in, uh, in, in game time, in video time. So, uh, yeah, 200 years. 200 years? What? That means you're, uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> Perhaps I can whip you up a snack? I love how ridiculously humoristic uh, Coldsworth is, but uh, yeah, you can actually ask him if he's okay, and he has quite of a mental breakdown if you succeed. Codsworth, you're acting... But it's based on my charisma set. That weird. sucks at the moment. What's wrong? I... Oh, there we go. I... We got it anyway. Oh, sir, it's been just horrible. Two centuries with no one to talk to, no one to serve. 
I spent the first ten years trying to keep the floors waxed, but nothing gets out nuclear fallout from vinyl wood. <laughs> nothing! I actually want to check that. Do we have vinyl wood? about the futility of dusting a collapsed house. And the car, the car, how do you polish rust? I love that statement. How do you polish rust? Now, and I'm feeling sorry for myself. Shall we search the neighborhood together? He turned that around rather quickly. May turn up yet. No, 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 no. Um, the missus got shot in the face and she's still down... Um, well, more than six feet under, 60 feet under, probably. Um, yes. All right. Lead the way. Proud to serve, sir. So let's see how we do against um, bloat flies and the like, because that might actually just suck monkey balls. Um, let's, let's have a look around. Oh, I, I definitely need to, need to, holy shit. There we go. Um, I do want to try... Wow! Oh, gods were just... Yeah, you just smoked the entire area, didn't you? Um, do, can I? Can't work. No, no, no. Yeah, Mr. Bob, there we go. Foot fly meat. Ah, there we go. There's one stuck in the... Stuck in the bed. So there's another bloat fly in the house over there. Let's try stealth. Although, although Godsworth got this, right? Yeah, ah, fuck off. Oh, God! Did he? Okay. I should have probably killed the 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 insects myself. So I think yeah, there's a few rat roaches over oh over here. Oh yeah, the healing rate is rather nicely though. I found a bit of purified water, and the healing rate on very hard isn't actually that. Bad, because that almost got me to full health again. Let's continue whacking insects in the face. You can't give up, sir. What about the city? Concord is nearby, and, well, the people there have only shot at me a few times. So Concord is nearby, and we might actually find some friendly people over there. So thank you, Thanks Coldsworth. For so for now, we're not going to try and do anything with uh, companions, because that's going to be a pain in the butt otherwise. Um, I do want to take a look around here because there's a lot of useful loot around. Most importantly, on the back side of one of the houses on the north side of Sanctuary, there's actually a hidden root cellar which can have a lot of nice loot. So yeah, somebody kind of made his own little bomb shelter over here, um, which actually has a bit of uh, interesting things because most importantly, there's a lot of... For some reason, gold bars around here, a very rare item that you don't usually see in other places. But yeah, there's like gold bars all over the place, an advanced safe that I can't unlock because I don't have any bobby pins yet. Uh, but yeah, purified water, wonder glue, which is amazing, and then the silver tablespoon, and then tin cans. Can? Aluminum can! Aluminum can, that is lovely, lovely aluminum. So right away, yeah, there we go. And even some pre-war money, which we can sell for uh, a premium. But yeah, no bobby pins just yet. Because yeah, with the bobby pin, I would be able to open up a few of the safes dotted around Sanctuary. So uh, yeah, let's continue looking around. Ooh, six bobby pins in a mirror over here. So that is very handy. So let's, let's open up the safe. So there's one over here, which I think, yeah, can unlock. Which is, of course, the same system as in a lot of Bethesda's games. Ooh. A lot of ammo I can sell. A few drugs, because we're going to be heavy on the drugs on this playthrough, probably. And then, yeah. No, the pipe pistol isn't really worth it. So that gives me a bit of experience. Clean black suit. Ooh. But probably the most important, well, two most important items in Sanctuary is, uh, of course, in your own home, there's the uh, Grognak the Barbarian comic which uh, causes our critical hits with unarmed and melee attacks to do, uh, well, to do 5% more damage permanently. So there we go, 5% increase to our main damage dealing uh, weapon, which is great. And then in Sean's bedroom underneath the cupboard over here, the dresser over here, there's actually the Your Special Book, which means that I can pick one attribute to increase. And I think I'm gonna go with uh, agility. So there we go. 
So the, your special book is very important because that means you have one more skill point, well, one more ability point you can actually uh, assign to one of your uh, skills, which is very handy. So you always have one point more than you get uh, when the Voltec rep, uh, well, rings your doorbell. Ooh, another bobby pin and a formal hat. So look at that, the clean suit with the formal hat and Bio Bob looks absolutely smashing. But uh, I think for uh, the uses we're gonna have right now, we're gonna just equip the Volt uh, jumpsuit, the Volt 111 jumpsuit, because we need a bit of damage resistance and the suit actually has none. But I do love the formal hat. The alternative is the military cap, but I don't really like that. So uh, yeah, even on Bob's burly body, kind of looks a bit silly. So let's go with the formal hat. Formal hat and eyeglasses. Look at him, the smashing lad. Ooh, Nuka Cherry in the fridge. I like myself some Nuka Cherry because the healing on those are is actually pretty good as well. Ooh, a suitcase to unlock. There we go. Psycho and a sweater vest and slacks for again two charisma. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use that. Ooh, a safe with a makeshift bomb on top of it. That does really look uh, friendly. So let's I can unlock it with a bobby pin. Don't ask me how that works because the safe don't usually doesn't usually have a key slot where you can use your bobby pins on. But hey, I'm not complaining. Not that great of a hole actually on that one because that's usually the better container if I remember correctly. Oh, there we go. Got that rather quickly. So we're in the business of happiness. This is a, a terminal that, that we found in uh, Sanctuary Hills itself. And I think it's just a record of a drug dealer. Yeah, so it's just a, a record of his uh, customers. And then of course, uh, yeah, just a record of all his customers, which is interesting if you go through it, but nothing really interesting there. And then the cooking station, which is actually really nice, especially on this difficulty, because the meat we've been finding on those insects are actually very handily baked into something uh, nice. Cooked meat is really, really powerful because it gives us uh, a lot of health back, actually. Even though you would think that grilled rat roach, for example, wouldn't do much, it actually does quite a bit. So that's 30 health if we want to. And I think that's pretty much everything I can make right now. And then almost if you leave Sanctuary, you have one more cabinet over here. Yeah, with always a few fragmentation grenades, which is interesting. I think they're already equipped. Uh, I'm not gonna try that right now, but usually they are equipped and I think I can actually, I'm just going to nip over the bridge before we do anything else because there's another melee weapon I want to have here and it's the tire iron. There's also already a tire iron in the mongrel over here. And then shotgun, yeah, let's take everything off hit this guy as well. And let's equip that actually. So the drifter outfit, it looks kind of even earlier in this outfit, but that's that's kind of what we're dealing with right now because it has the most damage resistance and right now we're not really in a position to starting to uh, accessorize. The tire iron does actually two more two more points of damage, so I'm actually gonna favorite that and put it on the right. There we go. So there we go. Tire iron. No, 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 no. What the? No, no. What? 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 What are you doing? Aha! There we go. The tire iron. Just hits at the same speed as the uh, security battle, I think. And there's a duffel bag with a Molotov cocktail over here, so that's pretty much it. Loot-wise, I think there's one more safe I need to check in Sanctuary Hills itself. So underneath the baby bed, there's another safe. Opening that up gives us another 10mm pistol, or fourth, I think. And then a few more shotgun shells, so more ammo that I can sell just plainly, because I don't use guns, obviously. And then we have this uh, center house, which is actually going to be my main crafting area. So I'm going to move everything closer to here and start dismantling a few things until we level up. And uh, yeah, let's see, see you guys in a second. I do love though that the game actually gives you a lot of raw materials right next to your first weapons bench. So a typewriter, used oil can, makeshift battery, all very nice materials that uh, can be, uh, well used to create a few things. So actually, while we're at it, let's see if we can actually craft something over here. So we have the security battle. If we upgrade that with electrified, we need science and blacksmith too. That's electrical damage, so that pretty much doubles the amount of damage it does. And then the stun pack uh, adds more energy damage. Okay, and now we have, we have the tire iron that has only one, which has only one upgrade, the bladed tire iron, which just actually turns it into a battle axe. So target bleeds and we get, uh, 
yeah, more than half the damage extra, so from 20 to 35. We need Blacksmith 2 for that, so it's not going to be anything soon. Uh, but yeah, that's the upgrades for now. So the chemistry station you can, you can actually find behind the drug dealer's house with a few interesting materials that you can use to create your own drugs. Which is uh, going to come in handy. I think it's supposed to be... No, it's supposed to be this way around. Yeah, there we go. So I put it over here. And now we have the chemistry station, cooking station, workbench, the weapons workbench and the armor's workbench. Accompanied by the power armor station all together at the same spot. I'm not going to just get rid of the... The concrete just yet yeah, that, that might get rid yeah there we go there we go and there we go cleaned up a bit and just while we're at it i'm gonna place a few more guard posts we're gonna need that anyway for security reasons and there we go we leveled up from that and then we can place two turrets as well which are gonna be nice i don't think these guys need any energy so there we go two more turrets at the entrance so uh sanctuary is a bit defended already so that means before we do anything, I'm actually going to level up because there's a first perk I want to take that's going to make things very interesting. So there we go, the perk chart. Um, so that's the first time we're going to be in this, uh, we're in this screen, which is going to be something we're going to return to uh, a lot. So obviously we want to go for big leagues as soon as possible. But to speed things up, there's a reason why I took five in luck. I think it's five. Yeah, I took five in luck. There we go, because we want to go for Idiot Savant. So uh, you're not stupid, just different. Randomly receive three times experience from any action, and the lower your intelligence, the greater the chance. So immediately also the reason why I went with Intelligence 1 for now. So we could go for uh, Idiot Savant and get that going as fast as possible. So uh, here we go. There we go. Idiot Savant, first rank taken. And just to see how that works, we're going to start making a few drugs. And I think we'll uh, trigger it automatically. So with fertilizer and plastic, we can make jet. And then with uh, psycho and jet, we can make psycho jet, which will add slow time for 15 sec seconds, I think. 25% more damage, 35 more damage resist, and 40 more, ac well, max HP, HP, AP, action points for 15 seconds, which is amazing. And it's going to be our go-to drug for now. No idiots of all yet, so uh, let's keep going on that. And then last but not least, we'll make a bed, because of course Bio Bob has earned his rest. So let's just, uh, no, 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 let's not store the bed. Let's just exit the crafting menu and get a good night's sleep. So there we go, well rested. There's actually a storm outside, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, before we, well, there's one more thing I want to do before we end this first episode. I'm going to head towards our next area and, uh, well, have a little chat with a new companion of ours. So the Red Rocket Gas Station, everybody knows the Red Rocket Gas Station probably. And of course knows who we're going to meet over there. Because look at that, greet the dog. Hello, dog meat, come here, boy. Hey, boy, what are you doing out here all by yourself? Uh, do you have an owner? You lose your owner, buddy. <laughs> okay, then. Aww. Let's stick together. And now we have ourselves a new companion. Hello, dog meat. Um, but yeah, so we can face our dog and begin issuing commands, but that's not what we're going to do, because there's a few things we can actually get here. So that's got all that. There we go. Stem pack and purified water. And once you start uh, running around in this place a bit longer, you actually get a that attacked by mole rats. I don't think they can actually bury inside here. Or they might and just pop out of the tiles here. There we go. Two hits seem to do it. And then we're going to actually start using vats a bit more. There's our first mole rat. So there we go. Vats. And I'm going to hit him in the face. So if you don't know Fallout, you can pause the game, select targets, and then you get a, a percentage of how much chance you have to hit. There are more. Oh, there it is. I knew there was one more. At least one more. Ow. Got hit there. Should be fine. Oh, oh there's another one. And there we go. There's the, the next one. Ow. 
getting there. Ooh, there goes his head. Haven't seen Idiot Savample just yet. Oh, wow. That was an animation. Nicely done, dog meat. Wow, and that one had a silver tablespoon. I do want to have Idiot Savant pop at least once now. I think that's everything for the mole rats. But there's a few more of those little cretins down below. So yeah, if you go to the back of Red Rocket uh, Station, there's actually a cave underneath. And uh, there's a few more mole rats in there. So let's just harvest all the glowing fungus in the world. Because glowing fungus is really interesting. And now we're in sneaky sneaky mode. Because of course in the cave there's a lot more mole rats. And we need to be careful. So you can see a few of them over there already. I think... What do I have equipped explosives wise? I think most of them are in the center area. There we go. And I can blow that up at least. So most of them now will be burning out. There we go, that's one. And there goes Idiot Savant. Oh, ooh, twice in a row. Uh, so that means I get uh, three times the amount of experience that I should have normally gotten. Which is, yeah, it has that little symbol when that happens. Did I? I blew that up. But there's one item I actually came here for. Uh, no, it's not. It's definitely not the coolant. But I think it's... I think it's over there, yeah. So, dog meat. Oh, <coughs> brain fungus. Dog meat, can you get me that fusion core? Because it's right next to that engine, and that engine is highly radioactive. Don't really want to get that, so... He got it for me. Thank you. Hold. No, no, no. Let's Follow. Go. And cancel all that, and then can I get the... Yeah, the fusion core, there we go. Because that's going to come in handy. And that, now you actually saw Idiot Savant in action as well. Another duffel bag in here, which can gives us another Molotov cocktail, which fills that up rice nicely, because we actually use it to kill the mole rats. And a few more mole rats inside of this place. A rabbit mole rat. And then a critical. And then two more, three more. Ooh, it's poisoning me. That was a heavy, heavy guy. I thought there was another one. Yeah, and you can see my health dropping rather quickly on this difficulty. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Nothing a bit of a grilled rat roach won't fix, but yeah. Another save at the end of the area with a uh, few bit of, bits more ammo. Ooh, a mine. And two more Molotov cocktails. It's like they know what I'm doing. That was interesting, but yeah, let's get back outside because there's not much in here. And with that, dear viewers, I'm going to end this first episode of Fallout 4, the gunless playthrough. Um, yeah, we did a lot already. We just uh, survived the nuclear holocaust. Our wife was killed, sadly. We killed a lot of insects and mole rats. And now we're at Red Rocket with our new buddy, Dog Meat. And I'm walking into a wall, which looks a bit silly. But yeah, next time we're gonna head towards Concord, as our old friend Cotsworth suggested. And we're gonna see what those people, those fine people, are gonna do to us over there. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you liked this episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And see you guys next time. Goodbye.